Welcome back to Spring Year 2, Days 8 through 12 of the Stardew Valley Min Max and 100% Perfection Guide. We have a huge variety of goals to accomplish over these 5 days, including a huge island starfruit harvest and some other crop harvests on the main farm, and also all of our starfruit wine kegs and oak resin tappers will be ready to be cycled. We will also have some Skull Cavern dives, a volcano run, and do some farming in the regular mines as well. In addition to all of that, we will finish Birdie's Pirate Locket quest and we'll also finally ask Krobus to move in with us. And of course, as we go around the map, we will give out lots of gifts to the NPCs. This video will be a lot faster paced than my other, so I do hope you enjoy. And if you're new, please consider subscribing so you can be sure to see more videos in the future. Let's get started with Spring Day 8 a good humor luck day, and we'll begin by taking care of our farm chores including harvesting the crops from the greenhouse and petting the animals. We will be giving out gifts early today, while most NPCs are still in their houses to make it easier to find them, so we do go through our chest to grab a gift for every NPC we think we'll encounter and are not at full friendship with them yet. After making sure we have everything we need to bring with us, we use the mini obelisk to warp to the bottom of the farm, then head over to Marnie's ranch to give Jazz a fairy rose, then we stop at Leia's cottage to give her a goat cheese, and then head back up to the west town entrance. Our first stop is Jody's house, where we give her a diamond, Vincent a grape, and Sam a cactus fruit. Next, we find Kent by his favorite tree by the river and give him a crocus, which is a flower, and flowers are a liked gift by most of the NPCs, including Kent. We also have a bunch of iridium crocuses, so it makes as a very nice filler gift even better than the beets. It is the start of a new week, so we check the special orders board and select Clint's cave patrol order, since we still need the recipe for the geode crusher for the craft everything perfection goal. We head over to Clint's to sell 23 iridium bars so we can afford a new shed and some rhubarb seeds to plant in place of where our cauliflower is grown. We then make a stop at Pierre's to give him a crocus and purchase a bouquet, which we will give to Maru since we have eight hearts with her now. We find Caroline in her greenhouse and give her a crocus as well. And then when we return to the main storeroom, we somehow stumble upon Pierre's secret stash. This cutscene is activated at six hearts with Pierre, and we must assure him that his secret is safe with us to gain 70 points of friendship, as if we threatened to tell his wife we would lose 500 points of friendship with him. Our next stop is Robin's shop, where she shows off her newly made bed from the hardwood special order we recently completed for her. We tell her the aesthetics are perfect, and now, after viewing this cutscene, we can purchase the bed from her if we want, but there's not much of a reason to. We purchase a new shed from Robin, which we might end up using as more space for kegs, since we don't have too much more room across the map without blocking forgeable spawns. We give a void egg to Sebastian and then the bouquet to Maru to start dating her. Next, we warp to the desert and quickly forge the coconuts and cactus fruit before stopping at Sandy's Oasis to purchase 271 rhubarb seeds. We work back to the farm and get our inventory organized and begin planting the rhubarb seeds in our top right field, which does have the deluxe speed grow already. I chose rhubarb seeds since they are the most profitable non-regrowing spring crop, and we don't really need any other spring crops right now for any reason I can think of. After planting all the rhubarb seeds, we grab any items we want to bring to Ginger Island with us, then use the beach warp obelisk to go to the beach, and first make a stop at Elliot's shack to give him a pomegranate. We then forge the beach and harvest and rebate the crab pots before arriving at Willie's shack, where we give Willie the wriggling worm, which is the second to last item of Birdie's fetch quest. We obtain the pirate socket in exchange, which we will give to Birdie to finish the quest later. We pay 1000 G for a boat ticket to the island, and give Leo a duck feather on our way to the island farm, where we stop at the chest to drop off some items, filling up our inventory. After that, we head over to the far west side of the island, where we find Birdie to give her the pirate socket, finishing her fetch quest now, and awarding us with not only 5 golden walnuts, but also the recipe for fairy dust. Of course, all recipes will be needed for perfection, but this recipe is rather useful as fairy dust is a consumable item we can use on any farm machinery to instantly finish its current cycle. For instance, 
We could stick a starfruit in a keg, then use a fairy dust on it to instantly have it finish and collect the starfruit wine. I'm not too sure how to get the best use out of the fairy dust right now, but I feel like it might have some potential. The one thing holding it back for me though is its cost. A single fairy dust requires a diamond and a fairy rose to craft. Of course, growing lots of fairy roses would not be much of an issue, but the diamonds are very costly, and the best method for getting diamonds would probably be using crystallariums, and those take a whole five days to grow diamonds. If anyone knows of any good uses for fairy dust, please let me know in the comments. While we are on this side of the island, we enter the golden walnut room and use 30 key gems to purchase the Junimo chests, and 20 key gems to purchase the heavy tapper recipe. Then we stop at the Bombo Big Gourmand Frog Cave to have him inspect our grown garlic to receive five golden walnuts, and this is the final gourmand frog quest. We head up to the Parrot Express and take it to the volcano to get started with a quick volcano run. We will slay every lava lurker we come across in hopes for more dragon teeth, which we will need 10 for the island warp obelisk. We will also try to collect lots of cinder shards as usual, so we can have enough ready for when we upgrade our galaxy hammer to the infinity gavel. We do, of course, need three galaxy souls and have not found a single one yet though. We can buy them at 40 key gems a piece from the golden walnut room, but I'd rather save my key gems since there are alternative ways to acquire galaxy souls. One very reliable way is from the island trader, on the last day of every season, so day 28, the island trader will offer a galaxy soul in exchange for 10 radioactive bars, which is quite pricey, but does save us some key gems. The other way is during the Danger in the Deep or Skull Cavern Invasion challenges, the dangerous enemies will have a small chance to drop a galaxy soul, but of course this is a very luck dependent way. I will plan to pick up 3 from the island trader using 30 radioactive bars if we can buy as many as we like, but sometimes the shop vendors will only allow us to purchase one, similar to the magic rock candy on Thursdays from the desert trader. I'm not really sure what the case is with the island trader and galaxy souls. So if we can only buy one, then I might use some key gems to get the additional two, but hopefully we just get lucky and get some from the dangerous mines for free. We make it to the top of the volcano, then head back down and over to the dig site to harvest the resources found there. Then we make one more stop at the island farm chest to decide what we want to leave and what we want to bring back with us, then we take the farm warp obelisk back to the main farm. We get our inventory organized and grab everything we would want to take with us to Skull Cavern in hopes of getting a super luck day the next day so we can potentially just warp straight on over in the morning. We're almost at the end of the day, almost ready to pass out. The time is about 1.30 a.m., but we still have a Void Ghost Pendant, which we can give to Krobus since we're at 10 hearts with him now. So we try to rush over to the sewers, thankfully make it just in time, then give Krobus the Void Ghost Pendant, and now in a few days, he'll move into our house with us so we can look forward to that. We don't have much time left in the day, so we just pass out in the sewers and move on to the next day. We pass out and wake up on day 9 to a neutral luck and rainy weather day. Luckily, no crops are grown today, as if they did, we would have to harvest them manually since the Junimos do not harvest crops when it's raining. We spend some time cycling the farm machinery and getting our chests organized, and you may also notice I have placed on one of the two Junimo chests we obtained from the Golden Walnut Room yesterday. We will want one here on the farm, of course, and the second one we will be placing right outside Skull Cavern. After making sure we have everything we need, we warp to the desert and head up by Skull Cavern and place that Junimo chest right outside its entrance. And having this here will be extremely useful as we can drop off any items that may be in our inventory that we will want to keep but not bring into Skull Cavern. The best example and something we will always want to drop off is the horse flute, since we will always want to bring it to the desert with us for the speed boost, but not actually into Skull Cavern, so being able to drop it off is very nice as it frees up an inventory slot. And of course, inventory slots are very precious in Skull Cavern, as there are so many different items that fill up our inventory, so every slot really matters. Unfortunately, once we place items inside a Junimo chest, we cannot actually pick up the chest 
until we remove all of the items from it, meaning we cannot use it as a portable storage to place down and pick up at convenience, which would be very nice if it were possible. Anyway, in Skull Cavern we avoid using many staircases and try to conserve our bombs, but still do make good use of the explosive slingshot since the ammo is relatively cheap. We are able to obtain quite a wide variety of items from treasure floors, notably two rain totems, two iridium sprinklers, and a crystallarium. We were not as lucky with iridium, only gathering 297 ore, but did get lucky with seven prismatic shards. We pass out on floor 121 and move on to day 10. We wake up and check the luck, and it is a super luck day, which would be great for a Skull Cavern dive, but unfortunately both our kegs are ready with starfruit wine, and our starfruit crops have grown on Ginger Island, so of course those take priority and we'll have to tend to those today. The kegs when cycling wine and tappers when tapping oak resin both take 7 days to complete, so they always line up with each other, which is very nice. Starfruit normally takes 13 days to grow, but with our Deluxe Speed Grove's 25% growth speed bonus, which is additive to our Agriculturalist Profession's 10% bonus for a total growth speed of 35%, our starfruit crops will grow in just 8 days, which is unfortunately one day longer than the kegs and the tappers time, but today they just happen to line up on the same day. If we were to eventually switch to hyperspeed grow, which has a growth speed bonus of 33%, we could bring the growth time of starfruit down to just 7 days, which then lines up perfectly with the kegs. However, a single hyperspeed grow costs one radioactive ore, one solar essence, and three bone fragments, which is very, very expensive, and we would want around 600 of it for the island farm, so we probably won't be switching over to that anytime soon. After taking care of many farm chores, we go through our chests one more time to grab a wide assortment of items to give out as gifts as we go around town today. We pass through the bus stop area on our way to town, and fill some of the kegs there with starfruit since we are already passing by. Our first stop is Jody's house, where we give her an expensive diamond when I really should just be giving her a cheap pancakes instead, but we are also here to give Vincent a grape as a birthday gift, which does bring us to 10 hearts with him now. We give Sam a quick cactus fruit then head next door to Emily's house where we find Haley struggling to open a jar of pickles. This is Haley's four heart event which is triggered by entering the house when Haley is there. She asks us if we are strong and we of course say yes which impresses Haley and gets us 30 friendship points with her and if we had said no we would lose 30 points. After a long and grueling battle with the pickle jar we are finally able to open it for Haley and enter her house to give her a coconut. Then we give Emily a wool and head back outside by Kent's tree to give him a blue jazz, which is only a liked gift, but it's cheap and easy. We give another blue jazz out to Alex, and then an emerald to Penny. Next we give a leek to George and a fairy rose to Evelyn, then enter Pierre's store and give him a blue jazz. We sell 200 silver quality starfruit to gain 206,000 G, which we will need in order to buy starfruit seeds. Our next stop is Harvey's Clinic where we apparently are due for an annual checkup. However, I think Harvey might just have a little crush on us since this cutscene is triggered once we reach four hearts with him and enter his clinic when he happens to be there. He notices our pulse is high and we can tell him we're a bit nervous or claim we're out of breath from working on the farm. Either option will give us 20 friendship points with Harvey, but if we asked if he's really a doctor, we would lose 50 points. After the checkup, we give Harvey a coffee which he loves, but it's a bit ironic since he was just telling us to be careful with our heart rate. But anyway, we leave the clinic and travel up to the carpenter shop, where we first give Maru a strawberry and then Sebastian a void egg, and we give him a bouquet as well to start dating him. Then we buy a shed upgrade from Robin and leave the shop and head up by the railroad to collect all the oak resin from our tappers. We also brought a few additional tappers and placed them on any trees that do not have one yet and then head over to the area directly north of our farm. We take the shortcut to the bus road and continue to cycle our starfruit kegs as we make our way back to the farm. Once we arrive back at the farm, we craft 50 new kegs and place some of them by the bus stop. 
As I've mentioned, I'm trying to not place kegs where forgeables can potentially spawn, so this will probably be as many kegs as we fit in this area for now at least. We finish collecting all of the ready starfruit wine and refill all of our kegs with more starfruit. After this, we warp over to the desert and buy 236 rhubarb seeds and 405 starfruit seeds from Sandy, then head up to the casino, which we haven't visited in a very long time, just to spend some of our many key tokens we won way back to stock up on farm warp totems, which cost just 500 tokens. I purchased 100 farm warp totems, which costs us 50,000 key tokens, and this will probably last us for the rest of this run. I also buy two alien rare crows for fun, then we warp back to the farm. After getting our inventory organized and cycling some machinery, we complete a couple fish pond quests and then head over to the bottom left portion of our field, where we have rhubarbs grown and ready for harvest. We harvest and replant the rhubarbs at the same time with more rhubarb seeds, then we harvest our green beans on the way back up to our chests. We use the beach obelisk to warp to the beach and head over to Willie's shack to take the boat to Ginger Island, where we arrive at the island farm at 7.40 p.m., which is a bit late in the day, so hopefully we will have enough time to harvest and replant all of the starfruit here. Of course, with the harvest and replant at the same time trick, we are able to take advantage of the game pausing during the harvest animation and only walk over the field once to harvest and replant all of the starfruit. This takes us to 10.40 p.m., meaning it only took us three in-game hours to replant over 500 starfruit, which does show the effectiveness of this harvesting method. After the starfruit harvest, we travel to Leo's hut, where we want to give him a duck feather, but unfortunately, Leo is asleep and we are unable to give him a gift. After this, we harvest some resources from the dig site and head back to the island farm area and then over to the golden walnut room where we drop off four prismatic shards for a key quest and are rewarded 40 key gems. Then we spend 20 gems on a deconstructor and then warp back to the farm. The deconstructor allows us to insert crafted items and after a small amount of time, it will return us the most valuable item used in crafting that item that we inserted. For example, we will be putting lots of our old sprinklers through the deconstructor, so for the basic sprinklers we would get an iron bar back, and for the quality sprinklers we would get a gold bar back. We prepare ourselves for a skull cavern dive the next day, then go to sleep and wake up on day 11, a neutral luck day. We are greeted outside by Sam, who tells us he'll be performing in a concert, and this mini cutscene is triggered at 8 hertz with Sam when we exit our house between 6 a.m. and 8 a.m., and we also must have seen Sam's 2 heart event. In order to trigger the concert cutscene, which is Sam's 8 heart event, we must enter the bus stop between 4 and 7 p.m., which we won't do today, but possibly another time. We harvest the grown blue jazz and replant it with some spring seeds to try to get some more spring forgeables. Next, we harvest our cave mushrooms, pet the animals, cycle our furnaces, then cut some weeds and repair our path that was damaged by the weeds before we warp over to the desert. We give 90 Omni Geodes to the desert trader in exchange for 30 desert warp totems and also pick up some spicy eel and a magic rock candy, then head over to the Skull Cavern entrance. We drop off some items in the handy Junimo chest, but I apparently forgot to drop off my horse flute. Oh well. We start off Skull Cavern very similar to how we did on day 9 with the same floor type and a ladder already spawned in a similar location, so that's pretty interesting. Since it is only a neutral luck day, we try to conserve our staircases and mainly use the slingshot to blow up rocks and ores on the way down and also make good use of the napalm ring explosions when slaying enemies. Once we are down pretty deep, we start using some bombs where there are large clusters of iridium ore, but when we can, we will still use the explosive slingshot to blow up the ores. We make it rather deep for a more casual run, all the way to floor 171, and are able to collect 434 iridium ore. Then we pass out and move on to spring day 12. Today is another neutral luck day, but rather than a skull cavern dive, 
we will be going to the regular mines to slay 50 skeletons to complete Clint's Cave Patrol Special Orders quest. We start the day by completing all of our farm chores, and then before leaving the farm, we go back inside our house to give Krobus a wild horseradish, since he is now our roommate and can reach a maximum of 14 hearts with him now. Our friendship points will also decay at a quicker rate with him, so we should stay on top of giving him gifts, and one thing that does make it easier is we can give him a gift every day now rather than only two per week. After this, we leave the farm and take the minecart to the town and enter Clint's shop to sell 10 iridium bars to afford yet another shed. We take the minecart to the mines and head over to the carpenter's shop where we purchase a shed from Robin. Next, we give Maru a strawberry, then warp back to the farm where we cycle some machinery, then grab the items we will need for the mines. We use the mountain warp obelisk to warp to the mountains and then enter the mines and give the dwarf a topaz. Before we start slaying skeletons for the special order, we use the elevator to go from floor to floor until we find a large patch of fiber to harvest with our haymaker sword to collect lots of fiber. We need lots of fiber because I want to fill a big shed with 137 garden pots and use deluxe retaining soil with that, which requires 5 stone, 3 fiber, and 1 clay to craft 1. This means we need 411 fiber to fill all the garden pots in a big shed, which is a lot but can easily be acquired using the elevator method that we are here. After a little while, we switch from fiber farming to skeleton farming, and we use the same strategy of going from floor to floor on the elevator until we find some skeletons to slay. We continue this method until we have slayed a total of 50, which completes Clint's Cave Patrol Special Order. Now that we finished that and still have some time left in the day, we go back to fiber farming as we still need a lot more fiber. We continue this until 8.40pm and now we should have enough materials to craft 137 deluxe retaining soil. We return to the farm and craft 137 garden pots, which costs us 1 clay, 1 refined quartz, and 10 stone each. Then we craft 137 deluxe retaining soil, which we will use on the garden pots, but since we don't have the starfruit seeds right now to plant, we will just store all this away for now and set them up tomorrow. We do still have 29 kegs from the other day, so I decided to place them in one of our big sheds and for now, we will try to push through some of our many, many stacks of coffee beans by brewing coffee in the kegs here every so often, and we will do this until the next starfruit wine harvest day, and then we can switch over to brewing wine here. With a little more time left in the day, we head down to the Cindersap Forest and over to the Secret Woods where we harvest the hardwood stumps. Then we travel to the Wizard's Tower and give the wizard a purple mushroom. After this, we warp back to the farm and harvest our jades and also craft five new crystallariums for the jade shed, which brings us to the end of this day and the end of this video. Tomorrow is the egg festival, which we did not attend last year, but this year we will for fun and we'll also set up the starfruit garden pot shed and spend some time at Ginger Island since our first banana tree should be fully grown there now. And of course, we will continue working towards perfection by making more money and giving out gifts to reach maximum friendship with the NPCs. If you are looking forward to future videos, please consider subscribing so you can be sure to see them when they come out. The past month has been very busy for me, so I haven't been able to upload as much, but I do hope I'll be able to get back to at least one video per week. I do always appreciate comments, so please feel free to comment anything you'd like to say, and also, always feel free to leave questions, and I'll be sure to answer them as best as I can. As always, thank you for watching, and goodbye!